Gaming Bolt presents 15 greatest quests you need to play in The Witcher 3. When The Witcher 3 came out two years back, it set an extremely high standard for the quality of quests. No matter how small or minuscule, in not just open world games or RPGs, but in all games in general. Stories told in all quests, from secondary ones to regular contracts to the main quests themselves, somehow all came together to weave one large, cohesive narrative in a wonderfully realized game world. Most open world RPGs that come out now are held to these very standards set by The Witcher 3. It's pretty obvious that listing just a mere 15 features as the undoubted best among the lot is a pretty tough job. We have, however, managed to do just that. In this feature, we have listed 15 of what we feel are the best quests in all of The Witcher 3, including the Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine DLC packs as well. If there were any quests you feel we have missed or any of our entries that you disagree with, let us know in the comment section below. Turn and Face the Strange Turn and Face the Strange, which is perhaps the best quest in the Blood and Wine DLC, is probably one of the best examples of how well The Witcher 3 contextualizes everything and weaves everything into one single narrative. Not only does this quest introduce players to the concept of mutations, which is, to an extent, quite a game changer, but it does so while also telling a compelling story that gives weight to the research you use in order to unlock these upgrades. It's nothing dazzling, but it's a solid and enjoyable quest. A Portrait of the Witcher as an Old Man Blood and Wine all around had a much lighter tone than The Witcher 3's base game itself, while still being imbued with some of those same dark and mature undertones. A Portrait of the Witcher as an Old Man is a perfect advert for that lighter tone. The quest is low on combat and high on humor, with its smartly written dialogue being the highlight, especially for the character of the painter who takes on the job of painting a portrait of Geralt. The Lord of Undvik Ah, Skellige. As if the world of The Witcher 3 wasn't fast, varied, and beautiful enough, the game opens up another entire region, and what a region it is. Full of not just beautiful locations and varied landscapes, but also some of the best quests in the entire game, the Lord of Unvik being one of them. One of the most intriguing side stories in The Witcher 3 is that of a hierarchical struggles in the Skellige Isles, and this quest is the most thrilling of that lot. It tasks you with traveling to a small island and defeating a giant that has been terrorizing the area for a year. It's an exciting quest that not only throws an excellent fight your way, but it also keeps you hooked with some intriguing plot movements. Return to Crookback Bog Return to Crookback Bog perfectly encapsulates everything that made The Witcher 3 the masterpiece that it is. Putting the gripping tale of the Bloody Baron front and center, Return to Crookback Bog is not just full of exciting battles, but also had memorable character moments with delicately written dialogue. The events that play out in the quest and how they affect future events are perhaps the best usage of choice and consequence mechanics in the RPG genre of late. The Last Wish The Last Wish is sort of a tribute to the relationship of Geralt and Yennefer, and not only does it excel at showing some memorable moments between the two characters, it also does so in the midst of an action-packed quest that takes you to some beautiful locations. The quest is typically well written, and it even manages to strike the landing perfectly with a rather touching moment between the two characters. Of Swords and Dumplings Of Swords and Dumplings is quite light on story, stakes, and riveting decisions for the player to make, but it's still a pretty entertaining, if not a little long, quest. It combines a series of fetch quests, negotiations, conversations, brawls, and skirmishes within the area of Novengrad. And while none of this is really all that special, it all just comes together compactly. What's more, you also get a decent weapon at the end of the quest. Wild at Heart Wild at Heart is open for players to play fairly early in the game, and while it can be easily missed and wouldn't rank among the most important in terms of the larger narrative, it's still a damn fine quest nonetheless. It involves what seems to be a simple, cut and dry story that eventually turns out to be much more complex than you'd imagine. There are some surprising reveals and the quest is capped off by a particularly weighty choice for players to make. If players play the quest early on in their playthrough, as they should, it will definitely leave a mark. Possession Possession is another excellent quest that comes out of the Skellige Isles. It features a riveting story that keeps throwing curveballs your way, and ends in a spectacular fashion as well, once again doing so in a manner that takes the player's choices into account. Some of the scenes in this quest are particularly chilling, and one particular section at the end will have you on the edge of your seat. Possession shows how well The Witcher 3 can grab your attention both with combat and without it. A Tower Full of Mice the Kira Metz storyline in The Witcher 3 is enjoyable for a number of reasons. One of them being the fact that she is a very well-written character who, it turns out, can also be romanced. 
A tower full of mice is probably the best quest in her quest line. It sees you traveling to an abandoned tower, a location that turns out to be extremely haunted. The events that play out are chilling, and the ending will leave you satisfied, if not a little sad. Carnal Sins Carnal Sins is an especially thrilling quest. It tells the story of a brutal and disturbed serial killer and sees you getting involved in a grueling and challenging investigation. One that involves investigations, questioning, chases, and tense battles. What makes the quest even more captivating is the fact that the stakes are always high, and it's always very easy for players to make a mistake, which might lead to another victim getting murdered. For many reasons, Carnal Sins is an absolute roller coaster. The Plays The Thing If you're looking for the quest that perfectly illustrates how well The Witcher 3 places emphasis on player agency, look no further than The Plays The Thing. Not only does it put Geralt in the middle of a ridiculous scenario that sees his putting together and then acting in a play, it also features some potentially hilarious moments, all on the basis of how the player chooses to play. It's not particularly heavy on action, but this is still one of the best quests in all of The Witcher 3. The Secret Life of Count Romilly The Secret Life of Count Romilly isn't the most dazzling quest in the Hearts of Stone DLC, but it is certainly the most atmospheric. It puts Geralt in the middle of a haunted castle, in the middle of a forest. You will come across a number of creatures that are rather tough to beat in battle, and as you progress through the quest, you will uncover more of the story. Watching it unfold in its haunting manner makes this a particularly riveting quest. Child of the Elder Blood Child of the Elder Blood is a very important quest in the game's main narrative, and certain choices you make turn out to be quite important in the end. It is perhaps because of this that it feels like such a memorable quest. It manages to move the story forward nicely, revealing certain facts about a very important character, while also giving players the chance to see the bond between Geralt and Ciri go in a rather endearing scene. Definitely a quest that sticks out as one of the best in the entire game. Family Matters As we've already mentioned, the Bloody Baron is one of the best characters you will come across in all of The Witcher 3, and as a result, his quest line is also unforgettable. Family Matters is the quest that serves as the foundation of everything that happens in this quest line, and rather early on in the game, it serves as an excellent advert for the excellent writing and shocking reveals that this game has in store for us. A Matter of Life and Death Triss vs. Yennefer is a never-ending debate among Witcher fans, but even the most loyal Yennefer fans will agree that the Triss-centric A Matter of Life and Death is a great quest. Choosing to focus on dialogue and character interactions rather than fights and action, a matter of life and death manages to strike a perfect balance between telling a personal story and moving a larger one forward. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.